on today's episode of the Cryptoverse. BitPay offers financial services to the RT News Network following bank account freeze. TunnelBear is the simple VPN app that makes it easy to browse the web privately and enjoy a more open and secure internet experience. Try TunnelBear for free by checking out the link in the video description below. Hi there guys and welcome to the latest episode of the Cryptoverse, your regular dose of news and commentary on Bitcoin, cryptocurrencies and blockchains. I am your host, Chris Coney. So let's get into today's news, shall we? So we turn once again to our old friend Bitcoin.com. The headline reads, BitPay offers financial services to RT following bank account freeze. This is an article by William Suberg. Now, a couple of qualifying points here. RT, that's Russia Today. If you've never seen RT, it's a news media agency. And the bank in question here is NatWest Bank in the UK. So this is RT UK specifically that we're talking about here. But we'll find that out as we go through the article. So it says that BitPay CEO Tony Gallippi has offered banking facilities to Russian state media outlet Russia Today after UK bank NatWest froze its accounts on Monday. How interesting. In an ongoing Twitter exchange involving RT presenter Max Kaiser, himself a Bitcoin proponent, Gallippi suggested that the broadcaster should download a copay wallet as the solution to this financial freeze of theirs. So you may know that Max Kaiser has a show on RT called The Kaiser Report, which I do recommend. And this fellow, Tony Gallippi, is recommending to use, use the Copay wallet, which I've got up on my screen here. This is a multi-sig Bitcoin wallet, meaning that in order to spend from the wallet, you have to have it that transaction signed by multiple private keys. So this is good for a, a business or an organization that has multiple directors. It's fine when you've got your own Bitcoin wallet because it's your money and you're the only person that has to sign it with a single private key. Super simple. But this copay wallet sets up a system where you need more than one private key to be able to spend from the wallet. And it looks pretty good. It's open source, etc., etc. And it says it has this uh, proposal payment flow where just like in any organization, you could get a sequence of sign-offs, right? You get sign-off from a junior person in the organization, then it would go up to their manager to, to sign it. Eventually, it would go up to the finance director or whatever, and then they'd give the final sign-off. Once all three of those private keys have signed the transaction, then it would be executed, right? So that's copay.io, if you want to look into that. I'll put the link in the show notes, as always. Getting back to the article, though, those tweets that it mentions are actually embedded into the article, and there's a link to Copay from there. Then the article goes on to say that the reactions are mounting, uh, are mounting around the, U- the UK's bank's decision. Owned by Royal Bank of Scotland, NetWest, they're talking about, the institution suspended all facilities to RT on a seemingly permanent basis. A letter sent by the bank, which has since been reproduced online, states no reason for the move. The shutdown is scheduled to take effect from December the 12th. Now, it says it states no reason for the move. Well, let's see, shall we? I have here on my screen a scanned copy of the original letter. It's got NetWest's letterhead on it. The letter is dated the 12th of October 2016. The address and the name of the author are blurred out. However, it reads, Dear Sirs, there's a heading that says Review of Banking Arrangements. We have recently undertaken a review of your banking arrangements with us and reached the conclusion that we will no longer provide these facilities. You will therefore need to make alternative banking arrangements outside of the Royal Bank of Scotland group. Pause there. So they're saying it's not just the case of NatWest doesn't want to serve you anymore. No organisation within the Royal Bank of Scotland group is interested in your business. Then under the heading of card facility, it says the bank will withdraw your card facility one month from the date of this letter, meaning that on the 14th of November 2016, the card facility must have been repaid in full. 
So I'm assuming that's referring to some kind of business credit card, right? So they said they're going to pull that line of credit as well. Then in the final paragraph with the heading of banking arrangements, it says, all of your other banking arrangements, including your accounts and bank line, will be cancelled and closed on the 12th of December 2016. In the event that alternative arrangements have not been made by this time, then any credit, ba credit balances held on the accounts will be returned to you in the form of a cheque. We assure you that we have only reached this decision after careful consideration. However, our decision is final and we are not prepared to enter into any discussion in relation to it. Yours sincerely, somebody, Nas Na National West Mr. Bank PLC. Well, can you believe it? Imagine if you got that letter, right? It would be bad enough if an individual got a letter like that. It seems really strange, doesn't it? They've. It seems like they've just arbitrarily decided they don't like RT anymore, and um, for reasons which they're not willing to reveal, of course they've got reasons. Careful consideration, it says here, blah, 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 not open to discussion, but they're not willing to give an inkling of what that reason might be, right? So let's move on. I've highlighted this next bit under the heading in the in the Bitcoin.com article. It's the heading is Bitcoin's complex niche to fill. It says RT has yet to comment on the proposals. Instead, RT has directed media activity at scorning NetWest. A statement described the decision as incomprehensible and coming without warning. Well, yes. Well, you can prove both of those things by. If this was the first they heard about it, this letter just came out of the blue, it was without warning. Is it incomprehensible? Well, yes, because they don't actually give a reason. So how can you comprehend something that has no uh, has no case behind it? It's just an arbitrary, we're cutting you off. How do you comprehend that other than that it's happened, right? There's no reasoning behind it. So then Arty added in this quote, it says, It is, however, not at odds with the countless measures that have been undertaken in the UK and Europe over the last few years, to ostracize, shut down, or downright impede the work of RT. In a post on Twitter earlier today, Chief Editor Margarita Simonyun sarcastically wrote, Long live freedom of speech. Well, yeah, I mean, this bit about them directing their media activity at scorning NetWest, it's a bit daft to do something like this to a large media organization, don't you think? Because they can just instantly put the spotlight on it. It's not like NatWest can keep this quiet. What did they think was going to happen when they sent the letter? You know, my first thought when I read this was why this might have happened, which I have no proof of, by the way, is that RT have been giving some decent coverage to the recent Podesta emails coming out of WikiLeaks. We'll get more to this in a second. We'll see more signs of this as we move on here. So in the green, it says Galipi also commented that the latest events, quote, may finally get Russia to legalize Bitcoin, close quote. While the cryptocurrency is not officially illegal in Russia, pressure from authorities and official suggestions of the de facto ban have led many in the country to refrain from transacting. Well, when a national organization like RT gets a slap like this and Bitcoin is their savior, maybe they might change their attitude. So this could be an opportunity for Russia, right? If the people are on the side of Bitcoin, and then Russia supports it, they may inherit a whole load of support from the people. Now get this next bit. In blue here, it says, Spectators will likely craft to try to connect RBS to the weekend's events in London. WikiLeaks founder Julian Assange has had his internet connection cut at the Ecuadorian embassy where he resides. Uh, what the hell? That's incredibly suspicious to me, I don't know about you. And then this next bit in purple says, separately, Max Kaiser has directly accused RBS of foul play in his capacity as an RT presenter on several occasions. Just last week, Max Kaiser tweeted that the bank's, quote, business model was to, quote, slaughter their own customers, then sell the vital organs to a subsidiary for resale at a huge profit, close quote. And then they actually embed that tweet from Max Kaiser in the article itself. But to be honest, this is why Max Kaiser is on RT in the first place, because he expresses his raw views about events that are, I would say, they're too hot for most media outlets to handle. So this whole bank account thing probably has a lot to do with Max Kaiser. 
That's just my opinion. The establishment might have finally got sick of him talking about like how bankers should be hung from the Tower of London for their um, causing the 2008 financial crisis. That's the kind of thing that he says on the show. Yeah, Max Kaiser is an acquired taste. He's he's very extreme, but he's creating an opposition to the the mainstream narrative. But in regards to NatWest just not really giving any reasons behind this, surely they're going to have to make a statement describing the specific reasons why they've taken this action, aren't they? I mean, if they don't, I think they're running a big risk of giving weight to conspiracy theories that surround the finance industry. Because without giving any like hard reasons, they're leaving it wide open for everyone to just jump to conclusions, right? So a final note here, let's flick over to, I've got an RT story up here, I've got RT.com up, and actually on the homepage, one of the popular stories, it says, backtracking from no discussion, UK bank says it will review closure of RT's accounts. So while the letter we just read says, final decision, completely not open to discussion on it, this article basically says they're starting to loosen up a little bit, that they actually might review the situation. And that may be in no small part to the amount of media attention that it has generated, which they can only combat in one of two ways, as far as I can see. One, they reveal their reasoning behind it, or they reinstate the banking facilities. Either way, I can't see it coming off very well. But at the end of the day, this is kind of good news for us in the Bitcoin and cryptocurrency community. Because the more instances like this, where the mainstream financial system basically pisses off um, organizations, the more appealing Bitcoin is going to become. And like I said earlier, you can sort of tarnish Bitcoin, you can be skeptical about it, you can shun it, you can do all of that stuff until you're put in a situation and Bitcoin sat over there as your savior, that might just be enough of an incentive to change your attitude. So thanks for watching guys. If you like this video, hit the like button. If you dislike this video, hit the dislike button. Leave me a comment below with some feedback and get subscribed. Or even consider supporting me directly by going to cryptoversity.com forward slash podcast and sending me a Bitcoin tip to the Bitcoin address on that page. If you'd like to support me but would rather not spend any money, then click on the Steemit logo, go to the Steam Network and click the vote button for this episode of the Cryptoverse. The Steam Network will then pay me some cryptocurrency without you having to spend a penny. If you prefer something physical in exchange for your donation, then head over to the Cryptoversity store and buy yourself a t-shirt with the Cryptoversity branding on it. That kind of thing helps me out a lot. Or if you would like more structured information on Bitcoin, cryptocurrencies and blockchains, head over to the courses section and buy yourself an online course. But that's all for today, guys. So until tomorrow and the next episode of the Cryptoverse, it's me, Chris Coney, saying bye for now.